Welcome back. It is the last year of this century, so I am super excited about that. This is super cool. Everything is great except for our Sims lives. <laughs> but anyway, last um, year, Eleanor became a toddler. Tobias became a child. And Mortimer is on the struggle bus. Uh, Alexander saw his... Um, mistake and he decided to help catch the pretender the dockers have not seen the light yet but maybe they will today so let's oh and grace and william started an affair we actually only have one birthday this year and that is althea goth so um let's roll for her she can't get a 4 or a 12 she did not she survived. And also, um, so historically, this is the year that the pretender was executed. And um, you guys were right. I did forget to add Princess Mary. Um, I was going to I was going to add her like I had her on my list. But for some reason, I had the wrong year of her birth written down. So, yes, I, I will add her in. She's probably a toddler by now if she was born a few years ago. So I will add her in and we will hop into the game. Let's do it. Alrighty, so here we are in our house. Of course, Pedro is revolting <laughs> against us. Um, you know, <laughs> anyway, Constance just had her twin girls. Both of them survived, and we're naming them Lillian and Leticia. So um, I just like the idea of, like, twins having matching names. I just think that's cute. So we're going to do that, and then um, she's having the two girls. And honestly, like, the gods have had, like, they have are able to have eight children, right? And so she's on her last child. She's now pregnant with her last child. And I totally didn't even realize that, like, I I just, I guess I thought, I was like, oh, they have eight kids. They have so many babies. The goth family is fine. And then I look at their family tree, and I'm like, wait a second. They only have one boy. The rest of them were all girls. And the new baby she's pregnant with is another girl. So technically, the goth family is not fine because... They only have one boy, so who knows, really, what's going to happen there. Um, I mean, I hope Alexander the, the third survives, but I guess in my head I just wasn't thinking that there was an issue for them, and then all of a sudden I realized that, that they were actually a little bit in danger. <laughs> anyway, um, Gabriel has just destroyed the dollhouse. Mortimer is at work. The kids are going to school. Nobody is in the house for a few hours. But, yeah, so... I was checking out what kids, so Gabriel wants to make another enemy, and I was checking out what kids he has bad compatibility with, because I figured that those would be the right people to make enemies with, and I think it's so funny, because the person he has bad compatibility with is Henry, is the future Henry the Eighth. <laughs> so uh, that is a big deal, um, that, that Henry is going to be Gabriel's enemy, but I think that, like, because Henry is evil, well, I mean, I can explain this more when I actually have them become enemies, but I think that because he's evil that they would, and he's, and Gabriel's mean, like, I think they would enjoy that banter, like, I don't think that they're enemies, I, I guess more like they enjoy being able to be mean to each other without any, like, bad feelings necessarily, so... Anyway, we'll come back to that when we actually have the two kids meet. But in the meantime, I do want to have an event. So Mortimer has been realizing that he's been having some problems maintaining the household with, you know, five children and no help, no support system. And so he is going to uh, have an event here. Um, we're going to have a ball and we're going to go out and see everybody. But like the thing is, he is very much like... Um, he's very much like trying his best, but is realizing that he kind of needs help. He, I know that, okay, I know that you guys know now <laughs> uh, in real life about Diana. And while I agree that Mortimer, Diana was the love of Mortimer's life. Like there's no denying that at all, but I don't think that that necessarily means he wouldn't get remarried. Um, and I think that if he did get remarried, that he would be remarrying only in order to have a mother to his children, a baroness to run his household. I don't know why I can't open up the profiles right now. But, um, yeah, I think that, that that's the reason why he would remarry. And honestly, I do, I want to do it. So <laughs> we're going to do it together. Um, we are going to 
start introducing him to some of the ladies. So there are actually only three ladies who are eligible for a future match. And these two are two of them. These are two of the bachelorettes that we had added a while ago. Um, and so we have Islay and um, Isabel. And so they both have good compatibility with him. Um, they both have good compatibility, but um, he has a bad first impression with Isabel and a good one with Islay. So that's the difference between the two of them. He, I went to go scope the surroundings to see who he finds attractive, and he actually finds them both attractive. So um, that's not bad at all. Um, he finds them both attractive. He has good compatibility with them both. It's just a matter of first impressions. That's the only difference that, that we're going on with them. So... That is what's going on there. Um, there is a third Sim who is, you know, ready, not ready for marriage. She's still a teenager, but that is Esther. And, okay, here's my problem. I, I love Esther. <laughs> Me personally, I love Esther. <laughs> and I don't know if that necessarily means that Mortimer loves her, but we'll find out. We're definitely going to have him interact with all three women um, and see where it goes. But, Anyway, so he's kind of hanging out. Grace comes over, and he realizes that everyone's acting a little weird towards Grace. Everyone is acting a little strange, and he's a little uncomfortable with it. So he kind of, you know, pulls her aside to talk to her and is like, Grace, what is going on? Like, what what's happening? And so they're having this conversation and come to find out that everybody knows about Grace's affair with William. Like, everybody knows they've gotten caught. They've gotten caught by not only Pedro, but uh, by um, Robert himself. The Earl knows. It's a big hot gossip because, of course, Robert told Quail. Everyone knows. Everyone's talking about it. And so, obviously, Grace's affair hurts her reputation more than Robert's affair hurts his. And so everyone is just like... You know, and Mortimer is like, oh my gosh, like as if the Dacra family doesn't have enough problems. They are already dealing with having supported the pretender. Now the pretender is being executed this year. So they have dealt with supporting the pretender. They're on the losing side here. Now Grace has not had a child and has um, had an affair with her husband's brother. And it's just like all oh, this drama and Mortimer is like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so Mortimer comes home after the party and he is like really having trouble moving on from Diana. Like he can't, even though he tried to talk to those ladies, he was like, it just hurt him. It hurt his heart, even though it was all friendly conversation. Like the idea of having to remarry has just like really made him very sad and so he's coming home he's like okay let's try this again like let me do my best to train the kids or not train but like teach the kids and you know make sure they're all okay make sure they're doing well all this stuff and like uh it's just like so tough for him because even though and like so pink sugar pie mentioned this is that like mortimer is very ambitious and driven and he wants his to do his best he wants to make sure his family's in a good position he wants to make sure that you know his family line is strong and lives on and he wants to make sure that you know he is the best he can be but you know keep in mind this guy's getting older his kids are wreaking havoc around the house like he just caught tobias making a mess on the floor and had like he's just there's, he's having trouble wrangling all the children. Like, it's just a lot, right? Like, it's a lot for him. And while I think that he is driven and ambitious and all that stuff, like, I don't think that he wouldn't use the tool at his, tools at his disposal. So, like, he is thinking that he needs to make sure his family is the best he can be, and he's realizing that he can't he can't wrangle all five of these children and do his job and deal with, you know, the Dacra family's problems and support Pedro and, you know, all this stuff. And so, well, I agree that Mortimer is not the type to immediately, you know, jump into remarrying. I do think that over the couple of years that we've had since Diana passed, that he is definitely, you know, coming around more to the idea of needing someone else's help and 
in doing that, in getting help, he is able to advance his family even more. Because, like, even he could, what if he remarries someone, like, from a good family? Then will that help his status, his children's status? Will it help them, you know, because they are going to need a woman to introduce them to society. They are going to need, a, the daughters are going to need a woman to guide them. And they don't have that. And so he doesn't even have, like, I mean, there's Grace, but Grace is in a totally disastrous position right now. So I think that, like, he is realizing that he, if he wants things to go well, he needs to make them go well. And that's, like, also part of his personality. But I do agree with you that um, I don't think that that would be his first instinct. So anyway, uh, here we have uh, the Earl has come over. And I think that, so obviously, Henry... Earl Henry is in a very difficult position right now. Even, oh my gosh, even Pedro. So even Pedro has come. Lady Whistledown's talking about us. And so Pedro has come too. And so basically Henry is like, look, obviously, like, we all know what's going on with Grace. We know what's going on with the Pretender. We know that all this stuff is happening. And Earl Henry finally has given in and says to Mortimer, I need your help. I need your help. And Pedro, of course, is someone who is pushing, like, yes, Mortimer, you should do something about it because Grace needs, like, help. And Pedro obviously still cares about his daughter very much, and he's not willing to abandon her. And he's like, you know, that's Diana's sister. Are you really going to let all these things happen to her and all of that stuff? So Mortimer is like, okay, okay, okay. Like, yeah, I can try and help you. Like, obviously, um, he knows that William has been very supportive of the king throughout all this. And so the plan that they come up with together is even though Grace and William have been caught and she's pregnant, so she is pregnant with William's child. Um, they know it's William's child because her and Robert haven't been woohooing since, you know, Robert is having his own thing and she's having her own thing. And so obviously Henry is realizing now that his son may not be able to have children because she got pregnant so easily with William. And then also William is the person who has been supporting the king. So basically Mortimer and Pedro and Henry come up with this plan where Grace will divorce Robert, marry William, the child will be the legitimate heir, and William will get to be the heir to the earldom because he is the one who supported the king all this time, and uh, Robert has not, and so they think that that could help the king kind of see the family more favorably, maybe, like, let them off the hook a little bit, where, you know, they instead are going to pass the title on to the person who has always supported the king throughout this whole situation, and the Dacra family under William will be able to kind of redeem itself, and so... Then we also have Grace connection to Mortimer, who is also the king's person, marrying William. And then we also have, um, you know, them able to have children and that Mortimer kind of able to protect Grace in this way by by having her be able to be with William and all that stuff. And then William gets what he wants, right? William gets what he wants because he's been trying to usurp his brother this whole time and it's working. So that's the plan. Anyway, you can see that uh, little Gabriel has been becoming enemies with future King Henry VIII, um, and yes, so Mortimer, um, I think Mortimer and Henry, while they're enemies, I don't think that that's, like, a bad thing for them, I think that because they both have negative traits like that, mean and evil, that they enjoy being enemies, like, they enjoy, like, going after each other, they think it's fun, and they think it's a game, and so it's not necessarily, like, something that would cause any problems in court, but it's something that they would have, like, fun with, and from what I understand, Henry VIII was very, like, into court games and, you know, like, this, like, wistfulness. Like, you know, he was... I just watched a YouTube video. It might have been, like... I, I follow a couple of history YouTube channels. Like, I think one of them is, like, History Made Easy, and then one of them is, like, Tea Time with History Tea Time, something like that. Um, but, yeah, I remember seeing recently that I guess Henry VIII was, like, a romantic. Like, he liked the idea of these court games where, like, you know the woman would fall in love with him without knowing who he is and all this stuff. Like, oh yeah, it was, it was a video about, um, the woman, I forget which woman it was, but the one that survived Henry VIII, they had like gotten divorced or whatever. And she got like really good alimony and she was called ugly, but apparently she was called ugly because she, he like tried to 
get with her without her knowing who he was and she rejected him for obvious reasons but then he was like hurt by that his ego was hurt that she didn't like immediately recognize what was supposed to be her true love or whatever so apparently he was really into those games and stuff and so I think that it, he would totally be into you know him and Gabriel kind of going back and forth and and having that kind of fun rivalry type thing so anyway Mortimer is now here with Henry the seventh trying to um, talk to him about the plan that he had just made with the Earl and with Pedro and kind of having these conversations about, you know, William is your guy, William can take over the earldom and, you know, the family will be back with you and, you know, everything will be okay and Grace will be okay and all this stuff and, you know, him and Mortimer are close, they're friends and so uh, Mortimer is his guy and has proven to be his guy and the execution is happening, like, and so I think that the king is okay with this, even though he is still, like, obviously this doesn't mean that the Dakra or the Goths families are totally out of the woods yet, but since they have come back around and helped the king, um, and shown, you know, especially William, whose loyalty never deviated, um, I think that that's a good step in the right direction for both those families to not be executed for being treason. Like, treasonous. Treasoners? What's the word? Treachery. What's the word? Traitors. <laughs> oh my gosh, why was that so hard for me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, that was tough. That was really difficult. <laughs> anyway, so I'm calling over the club. I want to come, I really do need to add more, more lots in this world, but this is the only one I got. And it does so much. Like, we have so many things in this lot that I think it's okay. But anyway, so we're going to call over the whole club and, um... So obviously, like, people have gotten the hint that Mortimer is starting to potentially look for a next wife because he has been spending some time, you know, getting to know the single ladies. And um, obviously, uh, Islay and Isabel are more appropriate for him than Esther. But I do want to introduce him to Esther. I really do. Because, you guys, when I aged up Esther and I looked at her and I gave her a makeover, and I was like, she's so beautiful. I would marry her. You guys remember me saying those words. I would marry her. And so I just want to see, like, could it work? <laughs> could I mean, that would be kind of terrible when you actually think about it. Like, she's still a teenager. He is over 10 years older than her. And obviously, that is not great for her. But um, anyway, uh, we're going to see where it goes. So basically, uh, Alan, who is the personal, you know, captain of the guard, head knight of the king, has come over to talk to Mortimer and introduce him to his daughter. And so obviously, he knows that, um, you know, his daughter is you know, marriageable and Mortimer's looking and Mortimer's a baron, like, and he has, he has like four children, like he has a lot of kids and not, there aren't a lot of options right now for his children. Um, so I think that he is definitely pushing his, I believe she's like his second daughter. Yeah. Cause no, cause he has a younger sis. He has a younger brother who married his wife's younger sister and then the two kids, I don't know. Anyway, there's a lot of people in this family. And so, um, you know, obviously Mortimer is the most eligible bachelor right now. So he is introducing uh, his daughter to Mortimer. Obviously him and Mortimer had a bad first impression. I think that that's probably because Mortimer is like, oh, seriously? Like, <laughs> but uh, Mortimer has a good first impression of Esther, though she kind of has a bad first impression of him, which is interesting. I think that she's probably like, seriously, you're going to marry me off to an older man who has five kids? for a title dad, like, <laughs> but, um, you know, she's polite, she's proper, she's of good breeding, uh, all of those things that they cared about, and so her and Mortimer actually, even though he had a good first impression of her, they became friends instantly with his gentlemanly introduction, and um, they have good compatibility as well, so I honestly think it would be between Esther and Islay, um, but also, like, Islay is a kleptomaniac, and I don't know if Mortimer would go for something like that. I think that he would very carefully vet, like, exactly how the ladies are to make sure that his future wife is, you know, not going to cause him any problems, is going to be very good in court, is going to be, you know, all of these things that he needs to make sure that his children are set up in the best position that they can be in. So... There's that. Anyway, Crown Prince Arthur has aged up into a teenager. He is right here. There he is. You go, my man. And uh, he is going to be dressed like his father, except I'm going to give him a less elaborate crown. Um, so there's that. And yeah, he's actually a handsome guy. Too bad he's going to die shortly after marriage. But anyway, um, 
there he is. He's a handsome guy. Uh, just also, I'm going to do the goth makeovers, and then we're going to head into the Dacra family and talk about Grace some more. So hold on for that if you usually click off my videos around this time. But anyway, so uh, yes, Arthur is going to get his makeover. He is, he's handsome. He is. And yes, you can see that I added Mary there. She's just a little toddler right now. She was only born like three years ago, so I do think that she is still a toddler. And we are going to go into the goth family next. We need to give Althea a toddler makeover, even though she's not a toddler yet. But I'm just so sick and tired of dealing with aging up infants in this game. So I'm just going to age her up and create a sim. And then we'll just get her a little outfit going. She is so pretty. Just like she has like her mother's hair, but her father's like skin tone. I think that she's great. She looks great. And like I said, I couldn't even remember. Like it's all girls. It is all girls except for the eldest son. So there is that. And then I'm going to give uh, Lillian and Letitia their quick infant makeovers. So they are right here. And then we're going to head into the Dacra family to talk a little bit more about what is going on, what they're doing. So obviously Mortimer has relayed that the king approves of their plan. And they are really you know, happy about that because they were very worried that things were not going to go well for them. And so I'm just going to get everyone's pictures done while we're loading into the game, except it loads pretty quickly quickly, so I don't even really get one picture done. But anyway, so um, I'm going to call a family meeting for them. So they're going to come down here and have a family meeting. I know I said Grace is already pregnant, but I couldn't use MCCC to get her pregnant. So we're going to pretend that she was already pregnant. And anyway, but I am going to have to get her pregnant right now. But anyway, so here is the whole family. They're talking and Henry is basically telling his family what's up. He's like, look, our family is in danger and we need to do this. Obviously, Robert causes a big tantrum about it. He's like, you can't do this to me. And he's like, Robert, you have not given us an heir and or like you your brother has supported the king and robert's kind of like i was just following your lead and and henry's like well that was wrong and i was wrong and a good you know a good leader of the family would not just be following what someone else does instead they would you know carve their own path that's best for the family or whatever you know some bs and so um Basically, they have this whole conversation and they, uh, you know, get annul Grace's marriage. They basically say that, um, you know, they, you know, they didn't have any kids and no one can really prove that they consummated the marriage. So um, they're going to annul that marriage and then have Grace marry William. So um, William is now going to be the future Earl and he is now married to Grace. Robert is now divorced, and Grace is, while she is not in a good place in society, she is definitely in a better place than she was being married to Robert without an heir, and, you know, Robert having now a bad reputation with the king. So all of that's happening, and that is where we're going to wrap up. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. I am having a lot of fun with Grace's story. It is still not over. So don't you worry about that. A lot is going to keep happening with the Dakras and the Peacocks and everything. And so that's not over yet. And yeah, we are going to uh, head into the 1500s after the review video. And I'm just like so excited for it. I think it's going to be so much fun to start with a new set of rules. And I'll probably have a video that like is explaining the 1500s before we actually get started there. And yeah, I'm just like, I'm having a good time. I'm excited for Mortimer to, you know, pick a new wife, even though I do love and miss Diana. I think we're going to be in a good position. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the the next one.